Can I invite uh, Professor A.K. Das on stage? He's going to tell us about all the newer updates which are occurring across the globe in the metabolic space. His topic is on what are the updates in 2020, 2022 in diabetes and metabolism. Dr. A.K. Das, uh, I believe everyone knows him. He's one of the most chased professor in India. He's been the dean of JIPMER. Yes, we can have a standing ovation before he starts the session itself. Thank you. Thank you, my, my very dear colleagues and chairperson. I do I'm going to present today is, is, is important from the point of view that it's a review of what exactly happened. So that, uh, so that it will be easier to grasp. And I will not touch upon the things that are, uh, I will not touch upon the things that are, uh, that are uh, not, not applicable to our country. I just think of the things which are applicable to our country. Furthermore, the 75th year of independence. It is the, so I always think that we should also take pride. I do agree with Arvind, what he said, Arvind was here just now. But you know, we also should take pride in what we have done and realized what people are waking up today. <clears throat> we'll discuss about how you are moving towards personalized care in 21-22 guidelines. And for me, RSSDA guideline is as important a global guideline as any other. So I'll be taking from there. We'll discuss what are the new kit or new kits in the block, which are definitely going to come in this year and which will have an application in our country. We just think a little bit about the TIR, the new metric, and I'll only present one paper. I hope uh, Shaukat is here, Bansi already is here. There are eight Indian authors for that article. I just speak about that article. Uh, and we'll also think a little bit about the digital consultation, CGMs in the hospital use, and the future prospects and related uh, research. Next. Sorry, I have to do it. Sorry. Now, if you go to the advances in the management of diabetes, if you take for type 2 diabetes, what is most important today are five aspects. We have moved away from the glucose-centric approach to a multi-risk strategy. Please remember these words, because these are the things I have carefully prepared, going through all the literature. It took about 10 days to prepare this talk. And to looking not only toward the glucose-centric, but the cardinal protection, that the order of the day, diabetes care today. Number two, what our president said in the beginning, towards a multidisciplinary collaborative patient-centered approach. I'll repeat this again at the cost of time. Multidisciplinary, collaborative, patient-centered care. And the last one is the precision medicine. Today, we are moving towards precision medicine. I'll show how we are moving towards it. And also, we are going to take care of what we call a chronic care model, which is again in the document which uh, uh, Abdul showed in the NCD document of the uh, Lancet Commission for NCD. I have taken from there a shared care, <coughs> connected care, and telemedicine care. What has happened in the type 1? What are the, what are the messages for the type 1 practice in 2022? Number 1, there are many new insulin analogs. There is CGMS today, and we have advanced pump technology. But I will also allude to the great things that have happened in our country because of the people present here, how the type 1 diabetes care in the country has got a fillip. <clears throat> Number two, there's a paradigm shift from the glucocentric approach to beta cell centric approach. Now, we do not concentrate only on the plasma glucose or HB1C. We try and endeavor to preserve the beta cells. 
now this paradigm shift of glucocentric to beta cell centric concept is uh, is a great concept under this concept now the healthcare professionals and the persons with diabetes are also given the insight that they have to protect their beta cells beyond glycemic control i'll show you what is the message that has been given today and what has been done now it has been shown today that every pharmacotherapy of diabetes should not aim only at glucose control but at the beta cell control and you know what are the what are the messages there number 1 one has to have in the past there was balance between tight glycemic control and hypoglycemia to avoid hypoglycemia currently we want to achieve normoglycemia without hypoglycemia that's the message that has come 21 22 that achieve glycemic control without hypoglycemia and number 2 in the future we want to achieve this normal glycemic control with beta cell preservation and to prevent diabetes complication and they have given an adjective healthy longevity there is no use living for 100 105 years 102 years not out but you know you have to be healthy and long, and have longevity so that concept has come now there is a difference in the paradigm shift in the pathogen type to diabetes mellitus that the insulin resistance versus insulin secretion now the new drugs that have come the incretin based drugs the glp1 ra or gip or the incretin like sglt2 inhibitors now they give some benefit for improving the beta cell function and uh, and and each achievement of getting near normal glycemia whether it is 111 as professor sesh has showed just now whether it is 120 whatever you want to near normal glycemia is an attempt to beta cell function i'll be coming to in a minute and this prevents complications and gives a very long uh, healthy longevity <clears throat> dear friends the other issue <coughs> is is not a ada diabetic approach this approach is this a four pillar approach which has been talked up by rsdi first others have emulated it today we have a four pillar approach where we take care of four things number 1 glucose management blood pressure management lipid management and using glucose lowering medications that have shown to have heart and kidney benefits atop a lifestyle modification and self management education and support this is talked up in the ada guideline the four pillar approach is also talked up <coughs> in our guideline as four pillar approach and this is given emphasis in 21 and 22 in the all the global guidelines now coming to sglt2 inhibitors what are the things new now you know they are now recommended to heart failure and can be started at the time of diagnosis i'll come to that obvious is here he is an authority on when to start sglt2 when not to start metformin we'll we'll discuss about it and uh, <coughs> previously sglt2 inhibitors were recommended <coughs> only to treat one type of diabetes can i have some water please <coughs> thank you <coughs> now today sglt2 in certain patient characteristics can be started at the diagnosis <coughs> now it was only recommended before till 2021 on the only for the hf ref today it is recommended for the hf pef for the both preserved and reduce asan fraction <coughs> and today all the global guidelines do recognize that sglt2 inhibitors can be used in heart failure for non diabetic and that's a great advance which came in 21 22 and and i must tell you that many of the non diabetic population are being treated with sglt2 inhibitors and there is a message of survival benefit by use of this drug simply non i'll touch up on i've taken out those slides because sashank like professor sesha i cannot talk about it after sashank now 
Only thing I wanted to mention that even though Finrinone had the CGI approval, not had introduced in our country, has been globally approved, I'd like to take two things. Number one, the updated global guidelines, it is not in our guideline yet, has suggested that certain individuals who have got grade 4 TKD, diabetic kidney disease, can take SGL2 inhibitors to preserve kidney function. That is something new. In the past, ADA was vocal to say that in this stage 4 kidney disease, people should stop using SGLT2. You can call it 20 EGFR, you can call it 15 EGFR, you can call it whatever, but about 25 to 15. But today, there are some, some literature and some evidences because uh, it, it, it is said that in the before stage 4, one can use it. At the time of stage 4, people should stop totally using this molecule because this can increase the kidney damage and we have drugs like fenrinone but phenotile which has showed the great drugs. But however, in the updated guideline of 2022, there has been a changing of this threshold. It has suggested that even people with advanced kidney disease can still use a silt inhibitor. That is that in 2022 and I do not do it. I don't think anyone of you do it now. But this suggestion like Indian petroleum advertisement, fill up and feel the difference. You have to prescribe and see how the EGFR behaves. Dear friends, this is my country's pride. I put it here, Indian pride practice. Combination therapy we have been doing from time immemorial. And today, the world has opened up to combination therapy. So I will not spend time because Bansi has given me a warning that I should finish first. So, so a combination therapy of medications of one, of two or more different types of drugs had been effective in helping people manage their diabetes better. This we knew much before and the United States and Europe had sudden, suddenly risen up to this. So this is our pride that we knew about it before. The ADA new recommends, guideline recommends, the people with type 2 diabetes who take insulin can combine insulin uh, with a GL2 and its protagonist instead of increasing insulin doses further, all insulin is covered. So they can use a GLP-1 which will help them. In our country, it is difficult. Number two, it also said that uh, past ADA recommended that you can give a GLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 is agonist, either or, don't to, not, not to give them together for a heart and kidney disease where the risk factors predominate, cardiac risk factors, give SGLT2. If it's a heart failure predominates, give GLP-1, classical teaching. But in 2022, it has been said, and we must practice it possibly in serious cases, that a combination of the two should be considered to lower the risk. And all these are evidence-based. The level of evidence I have not put here, it is A. So the combination therapy also has also come to SGLT2 and GLP-1 are a combination. <clears throat> in addition, instead of adding the drug one by one, it is better to start sometime the combination therapy <coughs> of the uh, two drugs <coughs> in the individual doses or a combined doses. <coughs> Dear friends, the country has been <coughs> well educated about semaglutide, but today semaglutide, especially the injectable 2.4 milligram or oral semaglutide uh, has been included as a weight management drug. In addition, it also has glycemic lowering efficacy, cardiorenal weight loss and natural benefit. I will not describe it further because this is already covered in many meetings. What are the advances in glucose monitoring? Now, the 14-day CGM assessment of TIR has become very much utilized in our country because it is available to me in my institute for 1900, but people do it 14 day. But it can be done even at a little more price in other institutes. And uh, <coughs> this gives a great benefit for the glucose management. Now, <coughs> sorry. A1C is the gold standard. 
but TIR and a new term called glucose management indicator GMI has been gradually incorporated into the standard of care as complementary to A1C. I'll come to the Indian paper in a minute. The ADA has now recommended that a 14 day uh, assessment of CGM TIR can be used to know the ups and downs. I am not uh, sure whether it has come to our guideline yet, but we will not go by the ADA, but I am just recommending what they have, I am just describing what they have said. Now it has been previously said that uh, the people who are taking rapid acting insulin should use the TIR. This year ADA has expanded the recommendation to include people who take only long acting basal insulin like Glargin, Glargin 2.0 or Degludec or whatever NPH and often referred to as basal insulin, they should do it. Now, it has been shown in type 2 diabetes who are taking only basal, a large population take glargin, very large population take only basal. They can improve the day to day glucose management by this. And today in 2022 guideline, CGM has been accepted for all the children of type 1 and type 2 diabetes in children which uh, Abdul Jargar described and who, re who use rapid acting insulin. For the children with type 1 diabetes, the ADA has recommended automated insulin delivery system. I will not describe it further to save time because this takes, will take some time to come to the, uh, come to, come to, come to, come to, come to practice. To my mind, one of the greatest advance of this year came last week in 2022 and that was the approval of the, uh, this is the approval for use of metformin for pre-diabetes or prevention of pre-diabetes going to diabetes, exactly the same thing which Professor Shesha was talking about. The approval came last week, sir. And you know, GDM is ultimately pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes stage. So this approval came and, uh, and you know, one more thing came this year. They said that the, uh, the ADA recommended that the screening can be lowered for people between 30, at, at the age of 35 years, no more 45. But many of you remember that in 2006, API guideline, not even RSSGI, in API guideline, we recommended that the screening must be done at the age of 35. So this is again a Indian pride practice, API in 2006, I've given the reference here. Now, why it came down in USA? In USA, they found the change came after the US Preventive Service Tax Force, they call it USPTF, lowered the recommended screening age from 45 to 35 in less than nine months back. And lo and behold, they came down to what we were saying that it must 35. Now, I must also have a piece of pride uh, I mean, a great uh, pride of the moment when I say that metformin is used first. We used in 1957, whereas the United States used it at the end of 2000. That's a Professor Sessa says, where are you quoting ADA all the time? So we have, we have, we're trying to do a series of programs saying that diabetes in India, diabetes ultimate. I spoke to my friends, I've not got the response, but you know, because we have a lot of things which we did first, which are coming into existence today. I told you that India uses numero uno drug metformin since 1957 and USA started in end 1993. I have only one slide, Bansi, for the type 1 diabetes advances, but I put all the four things. Now, in type 1 diabetes advances, what are the strategies to improve the therapeutic outcome? One is artificial pancreas. One has been approved that UVA, UVA with the Dexcom, I will not describe in detail because you want me to preserve time, but this is one advance. The other advance is the prevention by MAPS. That I'll describe, two MAPS I'll describe. The third advance has been inducing the immune response. Type 1 diabetes is immunogenetic. Genetic we can't change. As Professor said, you cannot change genetic. You cannot, we cannot choose our parents. Maybe some young people can steal their in-laws, but you know, we can't choose our parents. So genetics we can't change, but immune induction is possible for type 1 diabetes. And also stem cell derived beta cells are holding promise for type 1 diabetes prevention. Few other things I'll come back later. 
This is a great advance, a new drug, which got FDA approval day before yesterday. And I must tell you that they have named the drug something very, <coughs> very funny. I don't know why once why. If the RSD influence, they call the drug not Mohanjadaro, but Manjoro. Some people say, no, they call it. And, and it also sounds something like marijuana. I don't know why they call it, but be that as it may, this new drug which approved day for yesterday, we all must know about. You all know about it. You know, sometime back, Dr. Marshall from UK came to India. She was giving a series of lectures, and I was with her. She said, Ashok, how everybody in India knows everything about diabetes advance. Believe me, Marshall was the chief of diabetes UK, like diabetes India chief, Arvind, she was the chief of diabetes UK. She said, how in India, Everybody knows about everything. That's because of Rangdil Lila. That's the, because of the um, <coughs> diabetes program which uh, Manoj did. I mean, many programs, you know, we, we are second to none. That is our pride. So this we knew about. This is the new drug, Rizepatide. Once weekly injectable medication. LILD is the first and the only thing now, GLP-1 and GIP-1 receptor agonist combination. Fantastic, fabulous drug. I will not describe the slides, but I will go through it. LLE has brought it, which is a glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide action, glucagon like action. Now, there are very many trials. They have called it surpass trial, surpass one to surpass six. But I will, about 13,000 participation. I will just show the slides very, very quickly. It has shown that the gut hormones are useful. And if you have more than one gut hormones combined together, like GIP-1, GLP-1, you can give wonderful therapy. I will not dilate upon it. It's, this cartoon shows what GIP does and GLP-1 does in the trisepatide. But this is very important. You see the amount of weight loss. See the amount of weight loss the drug can produce. We some time back did a program in surplus. Remember, Rajiv? Before the surplus, surplus study came. We discuss about surplus, and you know, surplus study we presented in our country before it was getting approval last day for yesterday. The weight loss is superb, the blood glucose control is great, and you know there is no hypoglycemia, and you know, the in the type two diabetes mellitus, the experience reduction is great. So this from surplus one to surplus six, this LILD drug has found great great acceptance. I have only three things more to say, Bansi. One is about the CGM therapy. In our country, in our book guideline, and the world guideline has said today, the CGM is highly beneficial both for type 1 and type 2. If this device can be, this procedure can be implemented, a great deal of benefit will accrue to our diabetes patients. There is a closed loop patch pump which is seeking FDA approval by the time I was preparing the slide. But off-level use is already done there. Now this Omnipod 5 is can be used by anyone who requires both basal and bolus insulin. And this is a patch pump which features a closed loop system. Uh, and, and it was first approved for the type 1 diabetes. But there is also research to approve it for the type 2 diabetes. Now, there are also Omnipod Dash, where you can store the uh, insulin for, I think, three days, 72 hours, three days, uh, and, and this can work for three days nonstop, no need of changing anything. Uh, now, there are a few approvals in the 2021. I will not describe in detail because of lack of time. One is FaceTime Libre 2. Now, this smartphone app, which got approval. The Libre 2 was approved earlier. Now, why, what is the advantage of this app? The, the, there is obstetrin alerts in this for the low and high blood sugars, better than the earlier one. But most important, it is now today approved for use in children. And uh, the price is not same. It is a little less than the earlier freestyle, along with the app. And it's considered less, less costly. Now, many new things given approval in 2021. Uh, like Shaker Simplicity, I will not describe it. 
I will also not describe. I will describe this because this is one of my favorite. There is a HFX solution which is put by a small surgery in the spine. This is Andrew Bolton's work. And this sends signal and is a wonderful drug for diabetic neuropathy. Just, just remember it. It will come to India very quickly. The people have already met us. HFX solution is called Neuroj HFX solution. And 80% of those who get it implanted, it's a very simple OPD procedure. The pain comes down to nearly zero level. This come G6, I will not describe, but it's available today. And we have also Minimed 770 hybrid closed loop system. Uh, this is the MAPS. I must tell you very, very briefly that these MAPS are used very much. This, uh, the ultimate goal of an immunotherapy for type 1 diabetes is to suppress ongoing cell autoimmunity by restoring peripheral resistance without, uh, without affecting the protective immunity. And these MAPs are tailored for that. And there are two MAPs which have been tried to prevent type 1 diabetes complication. And uh, monoclonal antibody mediated diabetes therapy has also started. It will take some time to come to our country. I have only last two things, but I'm excited about it. One is diabetes remission. This is what we must be, uh, we must be very alert about. And this is the one thing which has, was given me maximum uh, impression about the advance. Now, I have put it here. This is my words. What are the predictors of type 2 diabetes remission? Like said, there is no, uh, no fog which will not disappear with sunshine. There is no type 2 diabetes which cannot remit. <clears throat> but there are four factors, five factors, which will produce the remission quite efficiently. One is age of the patient, how early you are going to start the therapy, the baseline HB1C, how many drugs the patient needs today, whether he is using insulin, and ultimately duration of type 2 diabetes. Now, <clears throat> I put it here, the predictors of remission, the predictors of good outcome of type 2 diabetes is the first year therapy. Uh, this is Keshu here, Krishna. Ah, Krishna is here. Uh, we, we, we did that. Krishna, why do you say about it? We did that program where Krishna came to the stage and said, that early first year type 2 diabetes management, you know, come to the front where you're sitting behind like a newly wed bride. So, so, so he's, no, 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 I mean, once you allow me two minutes, because it is very important. We must all attempt the moment the newly diagnosed diabetes comes to produce utmost control. Just one word from you, because you only give the concept first to me, then it came in this guideline. Yeah, I, I've got here. Very briefly, yeah, I think I think uh, the data is is actually a der derivation of the Wikipedia. Uh, but it's very interesting to note one thing: it's like investment, right? What what you invest in the first year keeps compounding over a period of time. It's not a simple interest; it's a compound interest. Right? And you will notice by around the 25th year, you will see see that difference in the mortality, the CV mortality between between the two ages. Yeah, I think so. Investing in the first year of diabetes is a very very important thing. I think what we also need to do is to start extending the glycemia. If you get somebody in the first year, don't think of 6.5. Probably, again, I'm doing this probably business a lot, okay. that we should probably think of extending it even lower and lower. Fantastic. So this idea came much before it came in the January 2022 article. Now, I've also shown it here that even though one has better prevention remission early when diabetes is less than six years, Krishna said, Keshu said, first year, you have missed the bus, less than six years duration, advanced till you can produce diabetes remission. I said, no tear that cannot be wiped off, no, uh, no, no fog which cannot disappear, no um, full moon night which will not disappear with the sunshine. So diabetes can be gone under remission. I have given here from the literature, uh, this is a 2022 article. My dear friends, uh, I'll pass on this presentation to my boss, Bansi Bhai. You can take share from it. It is a, it's a very epoch meeting article in 2022 where she said and showed that in six years duration or less, you need 10 to 15 percent weight loss. If the diabetes is advanced, still you can prevent, but the weight loss is 20 to 25 percent. 
so first year eg below 6 years it is little more difficult can be done even at the 10 to 15 years of time on control diabetes one can still try for the remission so i was just very passionate to say that we must try to as professor said as as close to normal glycemia as possible and we have been the wonderful drops in dharma mentorium today <coughs> dear friends uh, i will not go into the details of this diagram but only i'll show you one thing that uh, <coughs> there is a new concept for the diabetes remission quote on quote cure about restricting carbohydrate and calories in the treatment of type 2 diabetes i have put the a systematic review from the november 2021 from journal of nutritional science i will not describe it but even time restricted diet gives the same benefit as a complete fasting so i think that the message which has come this year uh, the next thing which has come is is the i have got a beautiful meta analysis diet advice for type 2 diabetes for the weight management there's one umbrella review of the meta analysis 19 meta analysis of the diet with a systematic review of 16 of them and you see the remission rate it varies between 54% to 20% this is the importance of diet and this article also i'll pass on uh, through once uh, by to all of you even though i have details i'll give the detail article also to you the last my dear friends is the application of uh, arvin's daughter's expertise the artificial intelligence because no advance is complete is talking about it now uh, sorry now the artificial intelligence is being used more and more for diagnosing many things in diabetes there are many papers in this last year about the ai being applied for the retinopathy diagnosis and also retinopathy and diabetes prevention this is an article where the ai has been ai has been uh, um, applied for a mri i don't know why this crazy thing from the mri they are going to diagnose diabetes by showing the diabetes detection area under curve roc the heat maps and they said that they can diabetes uh, the the 0.87 that mean error only 13% so one can diagnose diabetes by applying ai in the mri but this is not the way i'm suggesting it i'm suggesting it as a as a bizarre thing of ai application uh dear friends uh this also i think one advance there is a first interchangeable biosimilar insulin product has been adopted by usa for a year in our country also for a year i'll details of it so i'll summarize by saying remarkable advances are observed recent years both in type 1 type 2 regarding type 2 diabetes mellitus changes in the treatment paradigm moving from a glucocentric to multi test strategy finally people at risk and to a specific cardinal protection using a new anti diabetic agents are coming to the forefront regarding type 1 diabetes combined with new insulin analogs with better pharmacokinetics continuous and flask glucose monitoring improved insulin delivery devices uh, because of increasing variety of therapeutic approaches there is individualized patient care is possible today uh, artificial intelligence digitalization telemedicine they play very very important role and uh, uh, this is the one i was referring to this is the tir paper from india written by jyoti bansi i'm sorry bansi the first author uh, the type in range as a target type 2 diabetes mellitus i'm just showing this paper to tell you that in our country also people are doing tir in the most inexpensive manner and we can all do it we have just started doing it in our hospital today this can be done and this gives lot of lot of uh, a uh, lot of advances i will not describe digital virtual clinics because of lack of lack of time uh, dexcom i will not describe there are many many drugs from elaylee uh, aventis and other companies which i'll describe today uh, last word i like to mention that diabetes is a relentless disease but your friends the advances in general especially advances which uh, scientific chairman committee chairman gave me to review is still relentless so relentless advance against relentless disease thank you very much thank thanks you, for sir. your time uh, for uh, thank you very much for the uh, wonderful lecture about advances in uh, di diabetes both type 1 and type 2 technology ai thank you very much thank sir you.